Spinosaurus, one of the dinosaurs I made on Path of Titans. It is also one of my favorite dinosaurs of all time. So you can imagine my frustration when I see some of them lose. Well, that is exactly the case with this video. The only reason I made this video is because when I played this game for just for fun, I saw some Spinosaurus absolutely losing in a fight. So I decided that being the Spinosaurus fanboy that I am, I'm gonna make sure that Spinosaurus players can win at least 8 out of 10 battles they fight. And of course, disclaimer, the, these strategies are meant for 1v1, so don't go to be winning now. Now, being a semi-aquatic, Spinosaurus can fight on both land and in the water, and I'm sure pretty, sooner or later they're gonna find a, find a way to make it airborne as well. Jokes aside, I will first analyze the battle it can find itself in water. Of course, I will use my own battle experience as example, so let's pay attention to what I do during these fights. When I say water fights, I think about lakes and rivers. If you're out in the ocean, what the heck are you doing out in the ocean? You're not an ocean-based creature. The enemies you most likely will run into will be Sukumimus, Sarcosuchus, Duck, and other Spinosauruses. Now, I will be as bold to call myself an experienced PvP player, and if you're solo or rather new, I would try and stay clear from ducks. At least if you are alone or are rather new to the game. If you play modded Path of Titans, then you would also run into such a Kasaurus and Dinosuchus. Dinosuchus aren't too big of a problem, but I would try and stay clear from such a Kasaurus. In this video recording, you will see a 2v2 Spinosaurus vs Dinosuchus. Let's break down my thought process and my action during this fight. As you can see, we couldn't see the Dinosuchus on the surface, so they were likely underwater. Of course, if you can, try and drive the croc to land. A croc on land is a dead croc, so if you can, you should try and do that. Of course, if he's being stubborn and goes to the deeper parts of the lake again, then of course, you gotta just fight him there. The pond in the middle of crater is a bit too shallow for spinos to dive in, but even if it was steep enough, pay attention to how I do not uh, dive at all and try to stay at the surface at all time. The reason for this is, take a look on the spinos back, you know the thing that gives the spino its name. That sail is literally just one big target. The attack of Spinosaurus are directed for enemies in front, behind and under the Spinos. There are no real attacks for those above him. I cannot underline this enough, but never dive as a Spino in a fight. Let the enemies come to you. This is where the Spino's other main weapon comes in. I understand that being on the surface makes you feel vulnerable for attacks from below. But that's where the claws comes in. The bleed effect from their claws are dangerous. And of course, if they try to hide under the surface of water, they will need to breathe oxygen sooner or later and will need to head to the surface where you are awaiting them with claws and teeth. I'm not saying that you should rely only on claws, but you should definitely open up with them. Once you have gotten enough hits with claws, you can switch over to bite. You also don't need to worry about the effect going away too quickly or them healing. As long as they are in water, they are counted as in moving. This strategy is also used by duck players, so you need to be careful when facing ducks because they will most likely use same strategy. In such situation, I would suggest using bleed attack and doing hits and run. The arsenal I usually use in water fights are of course claw attack. We'll have a new variation of it soon, so we'll see if strategy got a change. I also use tough scales so you can withstand all the punishment from your enemies. I usually use normal bites, but of course in water fights, charge bite are also an option, due to you having more mobility and speed in water. There's actually two reasons to why I don't use charge bite. That is of course, you need to have good timing with the charge bite. 
Also, when you use it, you're kinda conspicuous, so it's not really difficult to dodge it if you don't have the timing correctly. The other reason is lag issues. If you play on a server with bad lag, then of course it's going to be difficult to hit your enemies. For tails, I would use swimming tails, and I know some of you may frown upon this, but in a water fight, the normal tail attack ain't gonna do much. So it's better to sacrifice some backwards attacks for a, a better speed, mobility, and of course, most importantly, turn radius. The other semi-aquatics you'll be fighting will probably have better swimming abilities than you, so just take my word for it. As for which spinal type you should go for, I would strongly recommend the defense spinosaurus. Even with speed spinosaurus, you're not going to outclass the other semi-aquatics in terms of swimming abilities, so it's better to uh, invest in more defense so you can face tank their attacks much better. Now, I said that this was most for 1v1s, but at, again, I strongly recommend to stay clear from ducks. Of course, if you're really experienced, then by all means, go hunt ducks if you wish, but such a casaurus, they are really, really tanky, so unless you're two or this uh, such a casaurus has the bad skin on or really bad player, then I would uh, really, really s uh, recommend to stay clear from such a casaurus. Now, over to land-based fights. Now, the enemies you'll face on land, well, short terms, basically the rest of them. And of course, you will be out of your elements, and if I can say anything, do not go head to head with them. In other words, don't face tank a T-Rex. Also, try to fight in a place with elevation and not salt flats. Basically what I'm saying, try to use the Obi-Wan strategy. Why? Let's see in the next fight here. Pay attention to how I try to use my claw ability when I am above the T-Rex. Like mentioned earlier, the claws attack are meant for those under the Spinosaurus, so to be able to fully utilize the claws ability, you need the high ground. Trying to win a fight without the bleed is difficult, if not impossible. You might not be able to defeat the land-based carnivores in terms of speed, but you can in turn radius. If you fight 1v1, as long as you make it a battle of turn radius, you will have a good chance of winning. When you're about to fight, try to open up with a claw ability attack. And of course, you need the high ground to do that. Tail riding will be the key to win your fights. And of course, with a much better turn radius, as long as you keep that momentum, you will win the fight. Even if you cannot outright kill them, you will send them away running away with a tail between their legs. And that is a victory in my book. Of course, it is different if the other party wants a fight to the death. Even if you don't have a good start, just remember you have a better turn radius than them. All you need to do is basically just dance around them, and sooner or later you will find a rhythm, and the battle will turn to your favor. Of course, if you can exhaust your opponent's stamina, then the rest falls upon how you play. Of course, they still have a dangerous bite and attack themselves, so don't just start face-tacking them. 
With the bleed attack still active, they will need to find a place to start a healing. And that's when you'll strike. It is as simple as that. Also, do not worry about if you get bone broken by a T-Rex. As long as you have applied the bleed effect, he too will need to heal. The only difference is the bone break ability only lessens your mobility. The bleed attack takes away his HP. So it's kind of a stalemate to be honest. If you attack by multiple adversaries, a more defensive position would be recommended. It is also easier to use the claw ability due to your enemies of the mid tier selection being usually smaller than you. Enemies of this variation will of course try and tail ride you. Do not be shy to use the smart move button and be ready to claw them and give in the bleed effect. Remember the bleed effect is dangerous when used right. Also, do not be shy to use the terrain to your advantage. This is a battle of survival, not armor. You don't have to play nice. Use the terrain to get them stuck and they'll be vulnerable to your attacks. The arsenal I use on land are of course claw attack, and for hide I use tough scales. You can change it to standard scales of course, but that is more if you're going to travel long distances. Of course, some people uh, like using the standard scales due to it giving uh, more speed, but that depends on the player. I also use normal bite, because charge bite on land, that's just stupid. I only recommend that if you're a duo Spinosaurus. One having the normal bite and the other having the charge bite attack. As for tail, swimming tail on land, that is even stupider. So of course normal tail attack. Now I've given you the knowledge that may help you to fight whatever may come your way. Of course it all depends on you. So to end the video here's me and my partner killing a subadult Argentinosaurus. Adult? No way!